This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I import and export vector displacement maps for sculpting? So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and I just have a Polymesh 3D star here loaded in. So the question is asking about how to import and export vector displacement maps. So let's first go through the process on how to import a vector displacement map and convert it to a vector displacement mesh inside of ZBrush. To do this, we just need to navigate to our texture palette here, and we just need to import in our vector displacement map. So I'm going to click the import button here. And in here I just have a map. This is just an EXR vector displacement map. So I'm just going to select that and now click open. After you load that in, it should now appear in the texture palette. And you just need to select that map. And after this is selected, you just need to come down here and click this two mesh option. So when you click two mesh, it's going to take the vector displacement map and convert it to a vector displacement mesh. So by clicking this button here, it's going to take that vector displacement map and turn it into a vector displacement mesh. And this should now appear as a new tool inside of ZBrush. So here we have our model here. Now after we have this imported in and turned into a subtool, if we want to use this for sculpting inside of ZBrush, we now just need to convert this to a brush. So you want to just position it like so on your canvas. Then we want to navigate to the brush palette up here and open this up. And if we want to use this as a VDM brush, we need to make sure we select one of the chisel options here. So I'm going to select the chisel creature brush and just click that. And this will now load that chisel creature brush. But now I want to create a new brush out of just this file. So I'm going to go to the brush palette up here. I'm going to go to the create menu. And now I'm going to click Create Multi-Alpha Brush. This is going to look at all the subtools I have for this tool, and it's going to create a new brush out of them. Since I only have one tool here, it's just going to create a single alpha brush. So I'm going to click this button. And after this is processed, you just want to refresh your bar at the top here. You should see I have the new part and a new brush created. So now I can go to the tool palette. I can say grab the Sphere 3D object, make that a Polymesh 3D and hit Control D to divide this up a little bit to get a little more topology. And now I can just click and drag on my model to start sculpting with this brush. So you can see it's taken all the properties of that original vector displacement map, and after you convert it to a vector displacement mesh and then convert it to a brush, you can now use it for sculpting inside of ZBrush. So after you're happy with this brush, you can go to the brush palette up here and just do a save as, and then just save that brush out. Now, additionally, if you already have a brush created, you may want to turn it back into a grid plane object to make some modifications or even export it out to use an external application. So as an example of this process, I'm gonna go back to the brush palette up here and open this up. And I'm just going to select the chisel 3D brush here. And in here, I wanna select one of these objects. I'm gonna select this mouth here. And with the mouth selected, I'm gonna go back up to the brush palette here. And in here, I'm going to use the two mesh option. So this is going to be a very similar process to what we just did in the texture palette. So this is going to take the part you have selected in this VDM brush, and it's going to convert it to a vector displacement mesh grid plane. So by clicking to mesh here, you're going to get a new tool created, and this is what the tool should look like. So it should mimic the same thing you were seeing at the top in the IMM viewer here. Now, after this has been generated as a subtool, we can now make our modifications. So we can come through here and say, use the inflate brush here and just inflate some of these parts, change our vector displacement mesh here to whatever we like. And after we've made these changes, we can now convert this back to a brush. So I'm going to go back to the brush palette over here. I'm going to select that chisel creature brush that we just made. And now I'm just going to create a brand new brush again. And I'm just going to click create multi alpha brush. It's going to look at that single subtool and create a new brush out of it. You can see now I have this as a new VDM brush here. And now I go back to my sphere object and click and drag. And now I can drag out that modified version of that VDM brush. So now that I have it modified, I can apply it to my mesh inside of ZBrush. But let's say I also want to export it out to an external application. So the process to do this is just make sure you have a brush selected that does have VDM parts. I'm just going to use the one that I just created. I need to convert that part back to a mesh again, so back to a vector displacement mesh. So I'm gonna go to the brush palette here, and with that part selected, I'm gonna do that two mesh process again, and it should give me the same thing I had originally. After I have this generated, I now just need to turn this into a vector displacement map instead of a mesh. So I'm gonna to go to the texture palette up here, open this up, and then down here at the bottom, we have a from mesh option. 
So it's going to look at the grid plane object and it's going to take what you see and now convert it to a map. So this is a reverse process of what we did when we imported the original vector displacement map. So I'm going to click from mesh and this will now give me a new texture map here. And after you do this process, you may notice that your image that's generated here has this red or blue coloring in the background. Now inside of ZBrush, this is not going to cause any issues, but you may run into some issues if you're using it in an external application. So what we need to do in order to remove this blue or the red option here is we need to just come through and flip our mesh and then do the from mesh process again. So if you see blue, your grid plane needs to be flipped in the Y axis. And if you see red, your grid plane needs to be flipped in the X axis. So this map here needs to be flipped in X and also Y. So to do this, we just need to make sure we have our grid plane objects still selected. We're gonna navigate over the tool palette here and go down to the deformation area. And in here, there is a mirror function. So we're first just gonna mirror an X. So I'm gonna make sure X is active and then I'm gonna click mirror and you'll see your mesh has flipped there. Now I'm gonna go back to the texture palette and I'm just going to do from mesh again, which is going to generate a new vector displacement map. So you'll see the red area has now been removed, but the blue area is still there. So I still need to flip this mesh in Y. So I'm gonna go back to the deformation palette. I'm gonna set my mirror option to Y, turn off X, and then click mirror again. And now I'm gonna go to the texture palette and now do from mesh one more time. You'll see now I have a vector displacement map that does not have any of those colors appearing in the background. So if you're exporting maps out from ZBrush and you notice that it is not working correctly in an external application, you may just need to do this mirror process and get your map looking like this instead of looking like this. And then when you export that out, it should work correctly. Now there is also another restriction that some applications have for using vector displacement maps. And this is that the vector displacement map needs to be labeled in a specific way. So some applications require you to have the name of your map be labeled underscore VDM. So after you've created the map inside of ZBrush and you go to export, you may just need to make sure that the vector displacement map you're saving has an underscore VDM. So there are a few external applications that require this naming convention in order to have the vector displacement map function correctly. So if you're having issues with exported maps from ZBrush, you can try labeling those maps with underscore VDM when you save them, and that hopefully should alleviate some of the issues. So if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.